Welcome to this episode of CSI Golden Valley, in which our crime scene investigators are charged with determining the time at which a murder occurred. Uh, the scene of the crime is a room in which a constant temperature has been maintained of 68 degrees Fahrenheit. And upon arriving at 10 a.m., the investigators immediately took the temperature of the body and found it to be 79 degrees Fahrenheit. Then they uh, went off and had a sandwich and let the photographers do their work, fingerprint folks and so forth, came back at noon, took the temperature again, and it was 75 degrees Fahrenheit. And we wish to determine, if we can, based on that information, the time of death so that we can uh, potentially rule in or out suspects based on the time of their alibis. So we're going to do this by making use of a well-known result that is due to Newton, as is so much else, that has to do with the rate at which a temper uh, the temperature of an object accommodates itself to the temperature of the surroundings. And it says that the rate of change of the temperature of the object with respect to time is proportional to the absolute difference between the temperature of the object and the temperature of the surroundings. In other words, the bigger the difference, the faster the heating or the cooling takes place as the object accommodates itself to the temperature of the surroundings. So big T is going to be the temperature of the object. T sub A, the temperature of the surroundings, which we hope is constant, the ambient temperature, is, it's called. Uh, and then little t is going to be time. And then K is going to be the constant of proportionality that is unique to the situation. And we have the good fortune to have here a separable differential equation, because I can divide both sides by t minus t sub a absolute. I can multiply both sides by dt. And now I have all the big T stuff on the left and all the little t stuff on the right, and I can go ahead and try and solve it. We can also, uh, in this case, take advantage of the fact that we know that the body is warmer than the room, and we know that the room is a constant 68 degrees. So in our particular instance, the left-hand side reduces to dt over t minus 68, and the absolute value is redundant. And that's equal to kdt. So now we can go ahead and integrate. And the integrals are not particularly tough. On the left, we're going to have the natural log of t minus 68. And on the right, we are going to have kt plus a constant of integration. And so our next step in the process is going to be to figure out, if we can, the values of the two constants, the constant of proportionality and the constant of integration. And we can make use of the fact that we have over here two initial conditions. We know the temperature at 10 AM. We know the temperature at noon. And for the sake of convenience, let's decide that 10 AM is time 0. So we'll work forwards and backwards from the moment when we arrive. That would make this the ordered pair 275. And the numbers are easier. We could have dragged around the 10 and the, and the 12. It just would have been more annoying. So I can plug in. I can stick in the ordered pair 0, 079, and I have the natural log of 79 minus 68 equal to k times 0 plus c. And here's where that 0 really comes in handy, because c is just the natural log of 79 minus 68, also known as the natural log of 11. So let's plug in the other ordered pair. We can say that the natural log of 75 minus 68 is k times 2 plus the value of c that we now know to be natural log of 11. We have over here the natural log of 7. And so k is ln 7 minus ln 11 all over 2. And if we're showing off our log skills, and if we don't want to write more than is necessary as we go forward using this constant, this is just going to be 1 half ln of 7 elevenths. And if we really wanted to show off, we could introduce some kind of square root interpretation of that one half, but this should uh, serve our purposes. So we have the relationship. We know the values of the two constants. We just need to figure out the time of death. And we're going to use the fact that at the time of death, in all likelihood, the temperature of the body was 98.6 degrees. Maybe the person runs a little high. Maybe the person runs a little low. If you're really being careful, you might make the calculation for various plausible values of the person's temperature and see how much difference it makes. But we're just going to forge ahead and under the assumption that it's 98.6. So we're going to have the natural log of 98.6 minus 68 
equal to this k, which is 1 half ln 7 elevenths times little t plus our c, which is ln 11. And then we just need to uh, work the arithmetic. On the left, we've got the natural log of 30.6 equal to 1 half ln 7 elevenths times t plus ln 11. So we subtract the ln 11 from both sides. We divide by the 1 half ln 7 elevenths. And we get that t is about negative 4.5 hours. And since we decided we were counting temperature from 10 AM, we roll it back four and a half hours. We are very close to 5.30 AM. Now, clever defense attorney is going to look at possibly the imprecision, the measurements of the, of the times or the temperatures going to take a look at maybe the question of whether the, the room truly was at a constant temperature, going to question whether the body could be assumed to be exactly at 98.6 degrees. But if we make these fairly reasonable assumptions, this is at least our, our best guess at the time at which metabolism ceased. So the investigation will proceed on that basis.